Well, the moment of truth has arrived. Let's see if uh, that nesting box worked. Pie's just gone in there, and we're going to go and have a look and see if there's any eggs in it. And if there is, then uh, Pi said she'll make some more nesting boxes. I think it's a great idea anyway. We've got three there, none there, none there, and none there. Three is better than none. They obviously like laying there, but um, they're normally so used to laying in other places. And as you can see down here, there's a whole clutch of them. I think really it's just a case of uh, giving them time to get used to it. So it's all good progress, can't complain. But as you can see down here, there's just loads of them. Look, all of those lovely. Yeah. You might have to put feathers and stuff in there. Yeah. Pi said it could be that uh, the bamboo shavings just a little bit too hard, so she's going to find some soft straw, and then uh, hopefully mix that with it, and uh, they'll then lay a few more. Cool, though, isn't it? Amazing how quickly these ducklings have grown though, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. The ducks are really nice. I like ducks. I like to see them on the pond as well. They're just such nice looking birds. But they are quite a handful to keep. And they can be pretty expensive as well. So uh, we've decided what we'll do over time. We'll reduce the amount of ducks that we have. Uh, Dad really wants to start breeding the really big ones and so far it's been pretty successful as you see we've got lots of uh, new ducklings the bigger ones are better for eating so uh, we'll be able to sell them on the market it's all good progress i'm glad when all this is sorted out though i really will be but it's coming we're going to go and sort out the um the chain link fencing we've got a load of eggs down there hopefully they'll hatch And we'll get this pen nice and secure and tidy it up a bit. It'll look good. It'll look, look much better and it'll work better. Keep the critters out. Yeah. When you raise livestock and then you've got food on the table, and of course it's not just livestock, it's all the vegetables and bits and pieces, it is highly rewarding it's uh, a very satisfying life and of course you're out in the fresh air all the time you know you're getting plenty of exercise it's just a great way to live and of course uh, one of the most wonderful parts of uh, living here and living this lifestyle is the view you can never get tired of looking at those mountains, just can't, just beautiful. Right, I'm off to feed my fish. Well, there they are, look, the crew. And today is cornfield day. Dad's out there right now fixing the, uh, the dak dak. And then we're gonna get to work on the cornfield. There's lots and lots to do. I don't know what the temperature is right now, but it's gotta be close to 30 Celsius and it is absolutely sweltering out here. And we're just sitting here uh, waiting for Dad to fix the dak dak, which is good of us, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, we're eating breakfast. And breakfast on the menu this morning, because it's only five star, we don't mess about, is um, sticky rice and banana. Now, for those of you who are thinking that uh, <coughs> sticky rice and banana is a bit of a weird combination, I'm gonna tell you, you've never lived until you've tried sticky rice and banana. It is absolutely delicious, it's really, really good. Bananas are sweet, come straight from our farm. Mm. A little bit of sticky rice. Mm. That's what I call good eating. You can't knock that, it's just lovely. <laughs>
it's everything a, a grind man needs. Stick of rice and banana. I mean, seriously, life don't get much better than that. That's beautiful out here. You can see the back end of the temple there. And then all the mountains. Now this land doesn't belong to my father, he rents it. Up here you can rent a, a rye of land for 1,000 baht a year. A farmland that he so you can grow stuff. It's uh, relatively inexpensive. So that's what he does, he rents about four rye. Now obviously this used to be done by buffalo. But um, today, it's all dak dak. I did actually say in a previous video when we showed you those buffaloes that you don't see a huge amount of them anymore. And it's because, you know, farming has become mechanized. But it is a lot easier. Pai just turned around and said that basically what father-in-law's done here is put down this fertilizer and he'll run the dak dak all the way down there. And then it'll literally just cover over the fertilizer as he goes up and down. Clever, isn't it? And mum up there, as you can see, she's uh, putting down a fertiliser. I don't think, in all my years, I've ever seen a people work so hard as Thais do when it comes to farming. It is not only back-breaking work, it's so hot out here. I mean, you just need gallons of water just to keep you going. It really is punishing. So the next time you're sitting there and you're eating your corn on your cob, or you're eating your steamed rice, and it comes from Thailand, you'll now be able to appreciate just how much effort goes into putting that food on your table. And of course, how little reward there actually is for those that do all the work. It is uh, back breaking, it really is. You got a guy over there with a tractor look. Yeah, some of them have tractors. There's a place actually in the village um, and this guy's got, uh, he must have close to a dozen tractors and other types of farm vehicles and they get rented out. Um, you can't sort of rent them out and use them yourself. You've got to rent them out plus an operator. So uh, it can be very, very expensive. I know last time that dad harvested the rice, he hired a combine harvester, but uh, the fee was nearly 5,000 baht. Yeah, of course, it does cut down the time. I mean, there was nearly eight right at the time. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of work. If you do it by hand, oh, it could take you days, where this, of course, just took about four hours. So it really does cut down uh, on the time and a huge amount of effort. It is back-breaking work. And there's mum, as you can see, putting down the fertilizer. And there's pie up there helping as well. Now you can see the size of the corn, um, it's still in its infancy, but this is about a month old. Things do grow really fast here, but you've got the perfect weather for it. You know, there's lots of rain and lots of sunshine. But I can tell you now, operating that dak dak, as you saw me have a go in a previous video, it's really hard work and it's so hard on the shoulders. You've got to be really strong. It is pretty out here though but it's um, blisteringly hot. And I'm gonna go and get a bucket, fill it up with some fertilizer, and start giving these guys a hand. I have become an awful lot fitter since I've been living up here. Back in Phuket, I was sitting in a chair all day on, on a computer. Now I minimize the time on the computer and maximize my time on the farm. I just love it. Couldn't think of a nicer place. And when you're standing there sweating buckets, yeah, all you need to do is lift up and just take a look around. And you get all this natural beauty. And then you know there's nowhere else you'd rather be in the world. Oh, today he worked harder. Huh? You want to see? This man. <laughs> <coughs> Honey? Yeah. Why you do so low? Because it's hot out here. 
have to kick more, quick, quick more, honey. Okay. Yeah. It's so hot though. Oh. How many buckets you gonna do today, honey? I don't know. Just wait until all the field's done. You've got four right there, haven't you? Do you, you sure? Yeah, you've got to do all of that, yeah. But we have to have up there. Yeah. About four right? Uh. Yeah. You can do? Can. I don't think so. <laughs> no, no. I think maybe one more bucket, he's gonna go home. He's gonna run, run away. It is hot though, isn't it? Okay, honey. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I do love it. It's just nice to watch things grow. And it is hard work, guys. I've got to admit, it's got to be 33 Celsius out here right now. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's hot. We've got plenty of ice water, plenty of sunscreen. And uh, yeah, it gives me a nice, uh, a nice tan, if nothing else. Okay, now Claudette, he work, he have to work for more light. I'm gonna go heal him. I think he, can, he cannot finish for light. I think maybe he gonna finish this bucket and he run away to go home. Well, that's it then, I'll leave you to it. <laughs> but what a way to make a living, eh? God. And it's sweltering, I mean, just scorching out here. I'm using uh, Factor 50 sunscreen and I'm definitely going to get a tan. And Dad has obviously set up the uh, Dak Dak trailer with an umbrella on it just for shade so we can sit and uh, have a drink. In the green bucket here we've got some ice water. And you get through gallons of it. Seriously, you're constantly thirsty because it's so easy to get dehydrated out here. I've said this before and I will say it again. If you are thinking about coming to Thailand for a holiday, especially in the dry season make sure please make sure you bring plenty of sun cream you cover up as much as you possibly can and whatever you do if you go out take water with you listen to your uncle graham he knows best <laughs> now you guys know me i've got a pretty happy disposition and why wouldn't i i'm living in paradise but i'll tell you what when i watch these people work it irks me i mean really really irks me they work like this all day every day it doesn't matter come wind rain shine doesn't matter freezing cold they're out here doing what they need to do to scrape a living they basically live from from one um, pile of debt to another they go and borrow money so they can buy the materials you know the the feed the seed uh, the fertilizer only to harvest it at the end of the day get peanuts for it pay back the loan only to find that they've got little left if nothing and then it's just one vicious cycle it goes all over again our neighbor as you know uh, recently uh, harvested his rice and to give you an idea the fella got six and a half baht per kilo now if you go to the local supermarket at the moment it's around about 40 baht a kilo well you it's obvious isn't it that it's not the farmers that are making any money they get paid a pittance they do all the work it's this is where all the graft is that you know milling it package it up and put it on a supermarket shelf that's that's no work that's 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 a walk in the park but it's these guys that do all the work and get absolutely nothing for it and it irks me we often hear of the big supermarkets talk about um you know fair trade policy and bits and pieces like that it's just rubbish it's all talk they, they, they wouldn't know what fair trade was. What I would like to see is the top executives of all the big supermarkets get off their leather chairs, come out here, and just one day, I challenge anybody for one day to come out here and give this a go. You'd drop like flies. You wouldn't, you'd never be able to do it. And then maybe they would understand just how much effort goes into this. It, um, yeah, it does, it, it makes me angry. Makes me angry that they don't have a better lifestyle for, for their labour. And it's labour intensive as well. Again, you're looking at countries. It's not like, uh, it's not like the United States, Europe or, or the UK where farmers have a massive amount of machinery. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure, farmers in the West now are no longer having a really good time of it. I grant you that. But, um, you know, when, when all you've got is that dak dak and that dak dak serves as everything you can possibly think of, then you realise just um, how difficult it can be. 
My father-in-law hasn't stopped looking, just plodding along. My mum and dad did say about the fish, and um, the good news is that um, Pi's dad said that being that we've been looking after it, we've paid for the fish food and everything else, he's going to give us the pond. Um, he's going to put over some of the land in Pi's name. And, but I've turned around and said, OK, that's great. What we'll do when we come to harvest it, we will extend the old pond even more because Dad wants to move that shack. I'll show you later where it where it go where the where the extension of the pond is going to be. So he's going to extend it, and uh, I said we'll plough money into that as well. Whatever profits there are, we'll plough into that and put fish in there, and then see if we can't move away from the corn, the tobacco, and the rice. We'll just grow for ourselves, because quite frankly, it ain't worth doing commercially. It's just. Um, way too much time and effort for almost no return whatsoever and uh, I think it's cruel and it's not just my mother and father-in-law I look at people around here and uh, I often hear on the news about people having tough lives back home in the UK and Europe and the United States you want tough come out here because it can almost make you weep and I mean that sincerely, I really do. I've seen, um, I've seen old people out here, and we're talking old people, you know, 80, 90 years of age, and they're still having to toil in the fields every single day just to put food on the table. And I don't care what anybody says, it's wrong. Yeah, you could turn around and say, well, Graham, you know, that's, that's life. You know, it's a way of life. They don't know any different. No, I, I suppose they don't. But uh, it doesn't alter the fact that in my mind, as a Westerner, I don't think people should have to work this hard, yeah, um, basically to pay off debt. It's, it's just wrong. Absolutely wrong in my, in my mind. But I'm really hoping now we, we're pegging out our hopes on the fish because um, I honestly think that uh, you know if we can do it and do it properly then um, yeah it would uh, cut down on the amount of work mum and dad would have to do because it's just heartbreaking seeing them. Pi and I have helped out in the village as well with the old folks there's a couple of really old folks and he, one of them gets on his bicycle every single day and he's 92 there's another one that's 96 and he does the same he actually lives on his farm in a little tiny shack Next time you've got a nice bit of corn on the cob, you know, and you're wrapping it up in butter, and next time you make some steamed rice, just spare a thought for these guys. Because it is hard work. There's no two ways about that. Well, that's pretty much the uh, field fertilised, but Dad's still got quite a bit to do. He's got to plough all that fertiliser in, so, uh, yeah. It is hot out here, though. Oh, it's hot now. As you can see, everybody's just taking a break. Just getting something to eat. <laughs> she gets all dressed up for the uh, heat. And it's sensible, you know, the headgear they wear. That keeps, uh, that keeps the sun off them. Otherwise, they'd pass out. Oh, I was feeling it out there, I really was. So there you go. That's, um, that's a day's graft on the farm. That's what it's like. Well, we're back home, and uh, Pi is really, really tired, but we've still got things to do. We've got to go down to the farm and feed all the animals, so uh, that's got to be done yet. So there you go. There's a quick glimpse of uh, what it's like uh, to uh, farm in Thailand. It is a tough old living, and that's what it takes to put food on the table, and indeed, uh, food on the table for other people as well. It is an experience, and one that I'm glad I've had. It uh, gives me a better appreciation for things, that's a fact. So from Pi and I, it's time for us to go and do other bits and pieces and we will see you tomorrow. Whatever you do guys, have a fantastic day and stay safe and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now guys. Happy, 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 happy. <laughs>